Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at VAT and we are going to be looking specifically at part one of VAT. Now, part one of the VAT deals with a lot more of the basics. So this question is intended for those students who are a little bit unsure or maybe don't have as strong a foundation of their VAT basics um, as they should have. So you need to do a little bit of a self-assessment there and decide that for yourself. If you are very strong with your VAT basics, then you may choose to skip the tutorial and just move on to everything in part two. But if you are a little bit uncertain and you've got a lot of um, gaps in your knowledge of the basics, especially from that from your undergrad, please make sure that you work through this question. Okay, so with that, let's start looking at the question. Now, question one is 20 marks, and there's a second question as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with question one. We'll do question one in its entirety, the required, and then we'll do question two. All right, question one, 20 marks. Rental Joy is a South African resident company and a registered VAT vendor with one month VAT periods. So it's a category C VAT vendor. So a couple of important things just from that sentence that you need to see. First up, South African resident. Most of the time that's the default, but just be on, aware of it always and do pay attention for it. This is a company. Right? Obviously we know that. But why is that important? When we're looking at VAT, you have to remember that companies must be on the invoice basis for VAT. And for section 15 plus section 91, Basically, that means they have to account for VAT at the earlier of invoice or payment. So this is the default. Obviously, we always have the exceptions, but that's the default. Remember, different, it's different from the payments basis. So the invoice basis is different from the payments basis. Now, this is important, especially when they tell you about they've got one month VAT periods. So you need to make sure, am I accounting for VAT in the correct period here? So, Rental Joy owns several properties which consist of residential apartments, right? Residential comes flats. So, what do we know about residential apartments? It's going to be what type of supply? It's going to be residential accommodation. And you need to know and always remember and be on the lookout for that residential accommodation is exempt from that. Then they've got warehouses and office blocks. Those things will be commercial accommodation and commercial accommodation is taxable. Because of its different sources of revenue, Rental Joy is considered a 75% vendor by SARS using a turnover based method of apportionment. So basically what they do is they take the turnover and I'm just thumb sucking amounts here, but basically what they do is they say Here's the residential accommodation, and here's the commercial. And the commercial is 7.5 million, for example, and the residential is 2.5 million. So that means 75% of this business is taxable, and 25% of that is exempt. So I just thumbs up obviously now these turnover figures, but that's the principle that they followed. So guys, this means you must be on the lookout for this because now remember again, when we see this, you have to do apportionment and you have to remember that when you buy something, if you're buying it for the entire business, you can only claim the taxable percentage of that. I'm going to remind you also here, remember output tax. is always at 100% except for fringe benefits indemnity awards those are basically the two I always just also say and we also see us applying at a percentage when we're looking at change in use okay so Let's continue. Very important just to understand. So you can see this first paragraph gives us a lot of information already. You have recently been appointed as the new financial manager of the company. The previous financial manager passed away unexpectedly and the accounting records are a mess. It is 
20 March 2019 and you want to complete the VAT return for February 2019 in order to avoid penalties. Now remember, if you are doing the February VAT return, the deadline for this is the 25th of March 2019 and if you do it on e-filing, it's the last day. e-filing and let's call it manually. Right, so that's not something that you'll necessarily be tested on, but just to, you should know that. The bookkeeper has presented you with the report below, which is an extract from the company's cash journal. It shows the cash receipts and payments for February 2019. The bookkeeper also provided you with explanatory notes. Now guys, very important, when you're seeing the cash journal, this will usually include VAT. Alright, let me explain to you. If you go and you buy something for 115 rands including VAT, we know that amount is going to be as follows. It is going to be 100 rand of that is going to be the X VAT cost and 15 rands of that is going to be VAT. Now let's say I bought whatever that is, an asset. Right, an asset. If I do my accounting records, what do I do? I say debit asset, credit, bank. Right, bank is 115 rands, the total cost. Asset is how much? The value excluding VAT and debit. It's input tax, so it's a debit, so it owes us 15. So, the cash journal is the amount including VAT, remember? And your accounting records, statement of financial position, um, income statement or statement of comprehensive income, is the X VAT amount. Right, so if this was an expense, for example, not an asset, um, st stationary. Right, see, that would be a statement of comprehensive income, profit and loss amount, also X VAT. So the cash journal, remember, includes VAT. Right, so they give us some cash receipts, rentals from the flats, warehouses, and offices. I'm going to remind you, remember, that is exempt. They say go look at note number one, so let's quickly go and look at note one. The rental income represents all rental income that has been collected. So it's cash, it includes receipts that relate to rental income of prior months. So as people might have been behind in their rent and now they've paid this month. Where the tenants were behind in their payments, so they say the rental in income invoiced for the month of February is as follows. So, this is, look at the rental income invoice, 1.9 million, 2807, And then if we go and look at our cash receipts, it's a different amount. So which one should be used? you will use the invoiced amount. Because remember, if they invoice them in prior periods, like they say here, that would have been accounted for. Right, but we're not going to go into too much detail on rentals right now. But a rental is the earlier of due date or invoice. We'll talk about that a bit more in part two. But basically what I want you to see is the invoice amount is what we are going to be using. And that is in section 93A. All right. So we'll do that. Then proceeds from sale of assets. Okay, so again, I very important, please remember section 71A says you must account for output tax if there is a supply of goods, services by a vendor in the furtherance of an enterprise. Now, 
Supply is something like a sale. Very important here, the goods. I want you to remember, guys, the definition of goods on section one. It says movable corporeal things. It doesn't say trading stock. So not only trading stock. I'm sure you are all now aware of it. You should be after working for the lecture examples. But in case you've forgotten, please remember that you account for that. If I sell on my capital assets, what we consider capital, that's an income tax term. It's not that. You still have to calculate VAT on that. So you will have output tax on these items. So there's a couple of items, a computer, reception desk, microwave, and a Toyota Corolla. So let's look at note number two. It says, during December 2018, a fire broke out at Rental Joy's head office. Although the fire was contained, a number of assets were damaged, and Rental Joy made a decision to sell the assets in February 2019. That is the VAT period that we've been looking at. All assets were sold for cash during February 2019 at the open market value as reflected in the cash journal. And just as a reminder, open market value is the market value including VAT. Additional information on the assets provided below. So they give us some information on the computer. Rental Joy purchased the computer for 49,900 Rand including VAT during July 2017. The computer was used as a server for the entire business. Now, why are they stating that? It's to remind you that 75% of this business is taxable and 25% of it is exempt. So, this means only claimed 75% input tax. Now, the computer was damaged in the fire and it was sold for scraps. Now remember, this asset was just sold. They told us that this computer is being sold. Now, when you sell it, output tax is, remember, at 100%. Always at 100% except for indemnity awards and fringe benefits. So this means you, you claim 75% input tax, but you're going to pay 100% output tax. So section 16.3. H would be applicable, which says you can claim additional input tax. Remember that section? But now, what is important to you is that it was purchased in July 2017 when the VAT rate was 14%. So this must be at 14%. So just remember that. Then we have the reception desk. The reception desk at head office was damaged in the fire and Rachel Joy decided to sell it. The reception desk was purchased in November 2018, that is when the VAT was 15%, for 25,000 rands including VAT. Now again, this is a reception desk for the head office. The head office is the taxable and the exempt business. So the same thing would have happened here. Claimed 75% input tax so you will also have to apply section 16.3 H but here the input tax was at 15 percent so just remind, remember that then we have the microwave the microwave sold was not damaged in the fire it was an old microwave used in the staff canteen and sold because they had purchased a new microwave so this means input tax was denied when it was purchased because it's entertainment and if input tax was denied then there is no output tax that is payable on it remember that was in section 8 14 and section 10 21 told us then the toyota corolla the fire blistered the paint on the, of the company Toyota Corolla and they decided to sell it. This vehicle had been purchased in May 2016 and had been used by the company's team of maintenance workers as they traveled between different locations. It is not considered a company car to any single individual and the cost had been 180000 including VAT. This would have also been input tax denied. So, again, thus no output tax and it's going to be those reasons over there 
this section 814 especially. Right, then we have interest received over here. That is exempt. It's a financial service. And we have dividends received, note number seven. We're going to read what it said there, or what it says there. But that should also be exempt as a financial service. There's no VAT on a dividend. So let's just go and quickly see what note number seven is talking about. Rental Joy holds an investment in Builders Limited, a construction company. Rental Joy received a dividend of 80000 in respect to this investment. As this was a dividend between two resident companies, there was no dividends tax payable. All right, so this is just a dividend. All right, then we have some cash payments, bank charges, right? Remember, guys, bank charges, I'm going to make the comment here. This is not... A financial service that's not the same as interest this is the service fee that the bank charges you there is VAT on it it's a service it's a supply of a service so you would have only been able to claim 75% of that because we've got our 75% vendor then we've got canteen equipment and furniture note number three already that seems like entertainment they say during February, Rental Joy purchased new equipment and furniture for its staff canteen. Very nice for everybody involved, I'm sure. But for us, this will be input tax tonight. Then we have an antique desk, 35,000, note number four. The founder and sole shareholder of the company, Mr. Rocky, made the decision that Rental Joy would purchase a replacement reception desk to replace the previous desk. Remember, the previous one was destroyed or damage in the fire. Mr. Rocky approached Mrs. Mishlamba as she owned an antique desk that she really liked. She agreed to sell the desk for him for 105,000 rands payable in three equal installments of 35,000. She is not registered for VAT purposes. Now, important guys, if she's not registered for VAT purposes, usually that means we can't claim input tax. But remember, this will be second-hand goods from a non-vendor so you can claim notional input tax because there's no real input tax because there's no invoice but they say you can pretend that there is the timing of this remember is um, when payment takes place And the value, lower of, cost, or open market value. Right, so they tell you three equal installments of 35,000. If you say 35,000 times three, it gives you 105,000 rands. So what is important here, if I take us to note number four, or back, not to note number four, back up. You can see here, this is the cash amount. So, you will use this for your notional input tax. Right, then we have air conditioner repairs. So, if we repair the flats, the flats are used for residential accommodation, so it will be exempt. The warehouses and the offices are both commercial accommodation. So we can claim 100% of the input tax on that. So remember guys, the only time we do this apportionment, like for bank charges, is when it's for the entire business and we, can't, we don't have a separate invoice for the exempt business and a separate invoice for the taxable business. Here we have separate amounts, so we can claim it. Wards and electricity, you will be able to claim 75% of that because it is the water and electricity for everybody. Bond payments, capital and interest, right? So let's just go and look at note number eight. All properties were purchased in prior years. The bond payments are broken down into the capital and interest components in the cash journal. These properties were purchased from registered VAT vendors. You may assume that all the input tax was correctly claimed where applicable on the cost of these buildings in previous tax periods. Now, the reason I put it in like that, guys, 
is I wanted to illustrate to you that it, the interest over here, it's important to remember that that will be an exempt financial service. Now, when it comes to the VAT on, on the capital over here, there's a whole story around fixed property, which will, and that's one of the more challenging sections. It's very popular in tests and exams. It's one that we'll cover in week two of VAT. So for now, I want you to just remember that we will assume VAT has already been claimed. So we're not going to go into that now. It's a whole separate discussion. We will do that next week. Then we have insurance payments. So we have insurance payments, general insurance payments. Sure, we can claim 75% of that. Can you claim the insurance on the canteen assets? So this is where a lot of students will say, no, input tax denied is entertainment. Remember, input tax is only denied on buying and renting the assets. The insurance on an asset is on an entertainment asset is not the same as an entertainment. It's insurance. So you can claim 75%. The Toyota Corolla, a motor car, can we claim the VAT on that? Well, when you buy a motor car, input tax is denied. But the insurance, which this is, you can definitely claim. And the Hilux single cab, well, what did they say? Go and look at note number five. So let's look at note number five. The company purchased a single cab delivery bucky. So remember, this is not a motor car for 280,000 rands in February 2019. They insured it at a premium of 6,000 rands a month. So you can claim input tax. How much would you claim? 75% because it's used for the entire business. The same with that insurance over there, that's 6,000 rands insurance. You can claim the VAT on that. Right, then we have fuel for the vehicles. What do we know about fuel? It is zero rated. And then we have consulting services, note number six. They say, Rental Joy entered into a contract of Advice PLC, a consulting firm based in the United States of America. Advice PLC sent one of its senior consultants from the USA to Rental Joy to assist with the company's strategy for the next five years. The consultant provided advice in respect of Rental Joy's residential and commercial properties. The fee for this was 400,000 rands. So this is an imported service. So what do we know about imported services? Section 71C says you must calculate output tax. And how is that amount calculated? That amount is calculated in terms of section 14 and basically remember what it is. It is the service fee times 15% times the percentage exempt supplies. So you only pay it on a portion that is exempt, which in this case is going to be 25%. All right, so that is it for the read-through of question one. If you go to the required, it then says calculate the net VAT payable to or refundable by SARS in respect of the February 2019 VAT period. You may assume that the vendor has always been a 75% VAT vendor. So they're just trying to tell you that there's no, nothing for change in use. All right, guys. So that's it. In my next recording, I'm going to answer question one, and then we'll continue after that with question two.